Marco Bezzecchi, who in turn has a second over Sam Lowe's, who's made it through into the podium positions. Raul Fernandez has dropped off this one now, and I'm not even sure that Gardner's going to be able to have a, a late lap lunge. They go out, we're underway in Moto2, and Bezzecchi's front wheel just gets a little bit of airtime, and it's going to be Gardner up towards turn one. Raul Fernandez gets a great start, but keep an eye on Di Gian Antonio. Digi goes through, and he's going to lead the way. Sam Lowe's has lost a couple of positions, it looks like, at that start there. But it's going to be Digi leading from Gardner there in second place. There's Augusto Fernandez, the Mark VDS bike, you can see up towards the sharp end. Yeah, Sam didn't get a great run there on the, the run to the turn one, but he's in there. Got through that first lap, you know, in one or two, you can have that mistake in, in that first sector, but it all looks clean so far. Here we come through, Cito Pons, what a great champion he was in the intermediate class back in his day, over the top of turn five and then down the hill they plunge towards the Danny Pedrosa, another uh, world champion in this class, when it was of course the 250s, a brilliant rider in his day, and Marco Bezzecchi already running wide in that oh, tight wow. hairpin of turn six, and he's going to rejoin behind Sam Lowe's. Marcos Ramirez almost clipped the back wheel of Sam Lozo. Just watching him the whole way down in there on the brakes and he was doing everything he could to avoid him. On board with Sam Lozo, he goes through back on Bezeki, who reclaimed that position from him through turn seven. Lozo leaves a black mark on the ground as he powers it through turn eight. At the front, meanwhile, it's Fabio Di Gian Antonio from Remy Garner in second, Augusto Fernandez in third from Raul, no relation there. Xavi Vieja in fifth with Sam Lowe's in sixth and Bezeki and Ayagura, fantastic fantastic start for the rookie who's already on the third row there is Marcos Ramirez great start from the local lad he's wearing that Andalusian flag helmet this weekend as Lowe's attacks Vieje into the final corner and Lowe's is up into fifth is he going to run it wide on exit here Michael yeah he's going to drift out there managed to stay off the paint but uh, yeah good clean pass I think it gives him the, the spot going into turn one he's going to have to fend off Vieje yet again yeah, and you can just see there, couldn't you, uh, Bezeki trying to get Lowe's back. I think Sam's run up the straight was seriously compromised by how he went into that final corner, ran it a little bit wide, lost the drive, so Vierge got past him, actually, on the uh, on the drive up towards Turn 1 before they even got there. There is Sam Lowe's, ahead of Marco Bezeki. Before the start of the year, we were talking about those two being the title contenders, but it's actually the two... KTM IO bikes, we heard from Aki IO before, he's done so well with his recruitment this year. They're one and two in the championship with Lowe's in third and it's Gardner in second, Raul Fernandez in fourth as Digi leads these early laps at the Spanish Grand Prix. Digi sounded confident last night, it looked like the bike was working for him, oh, he was feeling confident and Sam Lowe's there, I'm just sorry Michael to cut across you, just almost ran it into the rear of uh, Xavi Vierge there, got very, very tight to the back of the Spaniard easy done down and into turn six but he hasn't lost any ground and he's there ready to pounce ready to attack it's a difficult one to set up that overtake he can't roll around the outside and it looks like he's going to get him on the cutback and he does nicely done into turn nine yeah he will try and get him back in turn 10 peluki corner but it's not to be sam Lowe's has made it stick this time he just doesn't want to let digi get away at the front does he that's why he's having to make these passes this is the problem when you do start a bit further down the grid you get fired on the first lap you have to do a lot of work to try and get back towards the sharp end and Digi already tried to make hay while the sun shines over her end. Yeah, that's the problem for Sam, it starts out great with that clutch lever in a different position to normal to accommodate that rear brake on the left handlebar, but he no, normally starts in the front row of the grid, start from the second row, it meant he got kind of engulfed a little bit there on the run to turn one. Juan Fernandez on another, Raul on Augusto, so Raul up into third place, it was a real block pass that one wasn't it from Raul in turn one, Augusto had to sit the bike up and now he's the one that, that Sam Lowe's is looking at in fourth place. At the front, Fabio Di Gian Antonio, fastest on track as you would expect, pulling out seven tenths on Remy Gardner, a 141.524 from uh, Fabio Di Gian Antonio, that is a new race lap record. Impressive stuff, you can see he's already stretched out a little bit of a gap, so he's got a heavy fuel load, the tyres are just coming into their proper working zone and he's already setting a brand new lap record, so he's definitely feeling good that he can stretch his advantage at the front. Oh, oh that's crash out, looks like it's Augusto Fernandez. I'm pretty certain that is Fernandez, and you see Bulliger has gone down too. Bulliger has crashed out of turn six. For a moment, I thought it was Sam Lowe's with the Mark BDS bike scattering in turn six. But it is the Spaniard Augusto Fernandez which promotes Lowe's up to fourth without even having to make a pass. But disaster for Fernandez, who's 
looked more like his old self this weekend. Yeah, he was looking good there. He'd be disappointed with that to slide out at turn six. No damage. He's trying to get that bike restarted. I don't think he'd be able to. These bikes aren't easy to bump start. Bulliga down again. Obviously, he had that long lap penalty to do for his indiscretion with Vietti in Portugal. Didn't even get a chance to take it. No, he's already on the deck again. So this, we can watch Fernandez, he, the fourth man in shot. He's trying to break in there quite late. Maria just stepped out, didn't it? And then if he gets back into line, it's a classic turn six crash. Yeah, it's so easy to do. But had Bulliga as well just looked like he drifted, he slid out in the middle of the corner. So game over for both those riders. Look at the top left of your screen there, you may have just seen it pop up briefly. Fastest rider on track. This man in your picture, the Lincolnshire lad Sam Lowe's, who won the opening two rounds of the season, just put in a new fastest race lap of a 141.3, and that's a couple of tenths quicker than even Digi was going. Yeah, that's another new lap record for Sam Lowe's. You can see he's already inching his way onto the back of Ralph Fernandez. He knows he can't afford that. Uh, let that Grassini machine creep away out front because these two guys are going to be hard to overtake although Remy when he gets his head down he'll be targeting the back wheel of Fabio there is longevity to talk about here in Jerez T track temperatures up into the high 30s now uh, you do have to manage it in Moto2 however much there's only one rear race option that you're allowed to use this weekend you still have to, to manage don't you we have seen in Moto2 races Gardner in particular is someone who is strong in the latter stages yeah, Remy works the hard tire, works the rear tire quite hard, and there isn't uh, any options on the grid, so everyone chooses the same tire. So it's going to be about how the riders manage it in terms of wheel spin, how you work it through those fast corners. And Remy looks great whenever he does that kind of rear wheel steering with the the Moto Two machine, but it does give the tire a hard time. Some lows we've seen, haven't we? Uh a lot smoother these days, and does seem to be able to get more tire life since he switched to that Mark VDS team. Uh, Gio Bigo, the experienced crew chief in there, just seems to have a way to get the most out of that bike in the latter stages of races, and it's all about being smooth, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. It's been precise with the throttle, not being too aggressive, and uh, even just keeping the, the lines a little bit more flowing, a bit more gentle. Another rider who's actually looked good this weekend, Somkiat Chantra, but he's gone down at the fast turn 11. That's always a fast crash. He's holding his right arm wrist. That could be a collarbone there. The way he's holding his arm, it's the telltale hanging. Oh, that is uh, not a nice one. At turn 11, Alex Crivier corner, and uh, Somkiat Chantra, the tie rider, who's had decent pace this weekend. Unfortunately, he's crashed out this weekend. So, Digi opening up a second gap over Remy Garner in second place. Raul Fernandez in third, Sam Lowe's in fourth. Are they just pacing things here? Has Digi gone off too fast, or has he got enough to keep churning out the laps? On that last go around, Digi did a 41.5, Garner a 41.6, Fernandez a 41.9, with Lowe's a 41.6 fastest rider was actually this man, Marco Bezzecchi at 41.3. Yeah, they've all got similar pace here, but the gaps are a little bit bigger than they would like at this stage of the race, so Bezzecchi having to work his tyre hard to get across onto the back of Sam Lowe's. Remy Gardner's going to have to push hard. It looks like Digi's quite comfortable at, the, at that pace. Takes another tenth out halfway around the lap here on Gardner, so if he can maintain that rhythm, doing it as smooth as Digi looks on the bike, then it looks promising for this race. Looking a bit further back down the order as it's fairly steady. It's going to take the full complement of 25. Up the home straight for the penultimate time. And Fabio Di Gian Antonio has a three-second lead over Marco Bezzecchi, who in turn has a second over Sam Lowe's, who's made it through into the podium positions. Raul Fernandez has dropped off this one now, and I'm not even sure that Gardner's going to be able to have a, a late lap lunge like he did on Joe Roberts last time to clinch a podium position. It's an impressive lap from Sam Lowe's back into the 41s with a 41-8, and he actually has a slight sniff of Marco Bezzecchi. If he relaxes too much to settle for second place in this last lap, Sam could well have a punt in the last corner, but I think Marco's clever enough not to not to slip into those clutches. Ooh, so Sam that, is pushing. That was yeah, Sam was sniffing it, wasn't he? Because he was half a second quicker than Bezzecchi on that last lap, but that may cost him that little wobble as he came onto the back straight will maybe mean that Bezzecchi can't be taken for second place by Sam Lowe's. Otherwise, you feel he might have had to be able to have a go in the last corner. Yeah, you can catch someone napping, and Sam was obviously pushing on that last lap. He looks good here, so we saw two laps ago a lot of wheel spin, but obviously it's still pushing the bike forward, so spin doesn't always mean you're going slow. If you still have a good feeling with that machine under you, you can let it rip.
into the stadium section, devoid of fans is such a disappointment. However, we've had a really, really good uh, Moto2 Grand Prix. Well, at least in the battle for the podium positions. Out front, though, it's all been about Fabio Di Giannantoni. It looks like it's done now. Fabio Di Giannantoni is already punching the air as he heads towards the final corner. Can have a look around now as Fabio Di Giannantonio from the grieving Grassini team is going to bring the bike home and take victory in the Spanish Grand Prix just like Sam Lowe's did back in 2016 for the team but that one's going to be sweeter Di Giannantonio wins his first ever Moto2 race